friends today we are going to discuss what are modern block ciphers let us first recall few basic terms block ciphers ciphers in which character by characters are not encrypted to cipher text instead we encrypt block by block of plain text into cipher text modern ciphers ciphers that focus on the encryption of bits rather than characters symmetric key ciphers same encryption and decryption key and encryption and decryption algorithms are inverses of each other now we can easily understand the definition of modern block ciphers a symmetric key modern block cipher encrypts n n bit block of plain text or decrypts n n bit block of cipher text the encryption or decryption algorithm uses a k bit key which will be same for both the decryption algorithm must be inverse of the encryption algorithm so the receiver can retrieve the original message this figure shows the general idea of encryption and decryption in a modern block cipher when an n bit plain text block is fed as an input to the encryption algorithm with k bit key we will get an n bit cipher text block as an output when the same n bit cipher text block is fed as an input to decryption algorithm with same k bit key we will get our original n bit plain text block now we say that we encrypt n bit block if our message is less than n bits we must add padding to make it an n bit block if the message has more than n bits we should first divide it into n bit blocks and add the appropriate padding to make the last block n bit if necessary substitution or transposition ciphers modern block cipher can be designed as either substitution cipher or a transposition cipher if designed as a substitution cipher a 1 bit or a 0 bit in the plain text can be replaced by either 0 or 1 and now why we call it a substitution cipher because we are substituting different bits 0 or 1 in place of our original plain text bits for example if our plain text is 1 0 our cipher text can be 0 0 with 1 replaced by 0 and 0 replaced by 0 so we can say that the plain text and cipher text can have different number of ones coming to transposition ciphers in transposition ciphers we just rearrange the bits we have got in our n bit block there that is the number of ones will be same because we are just reordering them in both case Cipher text block. That is 
if we have an n bit block of plain text we have 2 raised to power n possible cipher text blocks so a full size key can map that n bit block to any one of the 2 raised to power n cipher text possible blocks full size key transposition block ciphers this cipher can only transpose bits without changing their values so it can be modeled as an n object permutation because it's just permuted permutating the bits with a set of n factorial permutation tables in which the key defines which table is used by the sender and receiver for it to be a full size key cipher we need a key that can map in any one of the n factorial outputs for that the key should be of size log n factorial with base 2 this now the following figure shows a transposition cipher can be modeled as a permutation in this we have a 3 bit input when this 3 bit input is fed into a 3 bit block transposition cipher what will be the output any of the possible permutation of this 3 bit that is 3 factorial possible outputs we can have the all 6 outputs here in this figure the set of permutation table with 3 factorial is equals to 6 elements a transposition cipher is nothing but a permutation full size key substitute transposition cipher it is not obvious in substitution cipher how they can be modeled as a permutation group but a substitution cipher can be modeled as a permutation if we can decode the input and encode the output now what does it mean by decoding the input decoding means transforming an n bit integer into a 2 raised to power n bit string with only a single one and 2 to the power n minus 1 zeros the position of single one is the value of the integer in which the position range from 0 to 2 to the power n minus 1 for example if we have a 2 bit block then decoding this we will have a 4 bit output with three zeros and a single one the position of one will decide whether the number is 00 01 10 one or 11 one one. similarly encoding is the reverse process because the new input and output have always a single one the cipher can be modeled as a permutation of 2 raised to power n factorial objects how uh, let's say uh, let us explain it now we have a new input of size 2 raised to power n with a single one generating a cipher text will include only repositioning this one to create a new number of size 2 raised to power n so it is nothing but a permutation we are doing a permutation so the cipher can be modeled as a permutation of 2 raised to power n factorial objects this makes the size of our key log 2 to the base 2 raised to power n factorial because we need a key that can give us all possible outputs for slides shows a substitution cipher modeled as a permutation group when we have a 3 bit input it will be first fed into a 3 cross 8 decoder we will have a new input with 8 bits 7 zeros and a single one this will single one will be permuted to create cipher text this new cipher text 8 bit will be fed as an input to 8 cross 3 encoder to generate again a 3 bit number 
Thus, a substitution cipher can be modeled as a permutation group. The set of permutation table with 8 factorial objects is a very large number. Now what we know about permutation groups? We know that it is useless to have more than one stages of permutation on our input because it will create same effect which can be achieved by applying one single permutation. The fact that a full size key transposition or substitution cipher is a permutation shows that encryption or decryption uses more than one stage of any of these ciphers the result will be equivalent to permutation group under the composition operation. Hence it will be useless to have more than one stage of full size key cipher because the effect will be same as having a single stage. Coming to partial size key cipher. As clear by the name of partial size key cipher the key will not generate all the possible mappings but generate a few of them. A partial size key cipher is a group under the composition operation if it is a subgroup of corresponding full size key cipher. So it will be not necessary to have a same mapping that is it will not be necessary to have composition operation under permutation. Keyless ciphers. Keyless ciphers are basically those in which a key is not shared between a sender or receiver on session basis or ever that is there will always be a fixed mapping from input to output in practice we don't use keyless ciphers alone because they are actually useless if the attacker knows that it is a keyless cipher it will make her attack more easier because she don't have to guess the key she can apply brute force attack or similar attacks to guess the cipher text Keyless transposition ciphers. A keyless or fixed key transposition cipher can be thought of as a pre wired transposition cipher when implemented in a hardware and it can be represented as a table when implemented in a software. So, whenever we want to encrypt a plain text block, we will see the table that is, what character will be mapped to what character and we will get our cipher text block. And in case of modern ciphers, we will see which bit will be permuted to do which place and what will be the output. Keyless substitution ciphers. A keyless or a fixed key substitution cipher can be thought of as a predefined mapping from input to output. That is, we will know that the first bit, if 1, will be mapped to 0 second bit of 0 will be mapped to 1 and so on. The mapping can be defined as a table or a mathematical function.